From beautiful East Tennessee in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, you are listening to the Sherry Voluntary Show, and I do appreciate appreciate you being with me this evening. Uh, my guest today is Mr. Clay Davis with We See You Watching Lexington, and uh, this is his second time on the show, and I do welcome you back, Clay. Thanks for coming on. Hi, Sherry. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Yes. I hear congratulations are in order for yeah. uh, the lawsuit that you guys had going on. A little bit of an update. We've had some news happen since a few weeks ago when we were last on. Yeah. So it's really good to be back on your show and let your, uh, all of your viewers and listeners know about what, uh, what's happening in our world. Cool. Yeah, so do you want to give a little um, backstory about how this all came about and then what happened? Sure, absolutely. About a, about a year ago, uh, about this time last year, my partner Mike Meharry from the 10th Amendment Center and I were... Uh, Noticing in the park in our neighborhood, he and I happen, actually happen to live in the same neighborhood, just a couple blocks from each other. Uh, there's a skate park here, and we were noticing that uh, some surveillance cameras were being installed. And that kind of tipped off Mike because he's got a uh, little bit of know-how, knowledge, and experience in the surveillance realm. Typically, when you see these kinds of things, it's uh, the tip of the iceberg would say as far as other types of surveillance um in our town we're we had graphic cameras but this was the first time that we've actually seen uh the installation of, of actual spotting technology in a public setting that was other than traffic um so it, it was a bit concerning to us especially with uh, public or private properties that surrounded the park and uh, just general population the public going in and out and using the park is just kind of creepy. Um, so the creepiness in conjunction with the fact that there might be more to this story kind of led Mike to um, submit some open record requests so that we could come find out a little bit more about what was actually happening in our, happening in our hometown uh, with regard to surveillance. And what we, uh, what we were asking for were some basic, uh, basic guidelines and information about the types of equipment they currently owned and used, um, how it was paid for, operation manuals, uh, model numbers of the specific types of equipment. And we were also very interested in any governing policies that the city's, city had in place that would dictate how these types of technologies were going to be used in our what we found out was that there were absolutely no policies with regard to house. <laughs> there was no oversight as to how the data was going to be stored, who was going to be observing it, if it was to be shared, and what capacity it could be shared, who it could be shared with. All these questions were unanswered, and they still pretty much are, uh, except for the fact that we know that there's very little in, uh, with regard to policy. Um, what we ended up getting after we submitted the open records request <clears throat> was about 600 pages of heavily redacted documents. <laughs> we really didn't get any information other than a little bit of in info about what it cost. Um, oh, so thanks for that. <laughs> where that money came from? Was it taxpayer money? Did they get it from government grants? Did they get it from civil asset forfeiture? So many questions that are still unanswered. Um, so what we did after we received the redacted documents, we were very unsatisfied with the result. We appealed to the attorney general, which is the, the typical standard operating procedure here with these types of things. The attorney general reviewed uh, our requests and found in our favor that the um, documents needed to be given over to us. So the police department decided at that point that they were going to defy the attorney general and that they, they indeed had secrets they wanted to keep with regard to surveillance. So as a bullying tactic uh, and in hopes that we would just quietly go away, they hit my partner, Mike, personally with a lawsuit uh, to sue us uh, in order to keep those things secret and not relinquish them to the public. And I don't know that they realize that Mike is not only ornery, <laughs> but <laughs> very, very well con connected in the Liberty uh, community. And he's pretty well known as far as uh, uh, his activism efforts. And so we were able to put together a pretty, pretty solid little 
grassroots coalition called We See You Watching Lexington. Uh, I joined up with him to add uh, my support and, and kind of help do some community outreach. And so he and I have partnered up. I, I, it's been the honor of my life to be a part of this and work so closely with, with Mike. Uh, don't get me wrong. He's, he's the guy, man. He's the one that that's pushed all this. I, I, I've just been a supporting, uh, cog in the machinery, but it's been the honor of my life to be a part of this. Uh, essentially the good news that has resulted from all this is that we just got uh, a couple of days ago, the judge that heard our case, uh, ruled in our favor as well. So now we're sitting on a an, a two and O record right now. We're two and O. The city has been summarily slapped down twice now, once by the attorney general, and now by the circuit court judge Reynolds. And we're not sure if they have any fight left in them. The spokesperson for the city, uh, we we were hoping the mayor would come out and make a comment, but uh, he's not going to do that. He, he let his spokesperson say that uh, sure. they have not decided whether they are going to try to appeal this or ask for reconsideration. So they have 30 days to uh, shit or get off the pot. We've got uh, 30 days before they have to give us what they want or they can appeal. Uh, I'm not sure that a higher court's going to find in their favor either, but if they want to try, mm -hmm. we're willing to try to. Uh, the good news is we have the ACLU representing us, and they did a great job, obviously. Uh, I think they're willing to continue the fight if, if the city is, but uh, that's where we stand at the moment. Uh, in, in Lexington, Liberty wins. That's, uh, <laughs> that's great. Uh, we don't often get a chance to say that, so I'm really, really happy to deliver this news. Uh, about 5.30 tonight, our story, our little our little grassroots uh, organization just got picked up by the national news at 5:30 tonight. The AP picked up our story. Uh, it's sweeping across the nation. We've got uh, newspapers in Kansas writing about us right now. So that's great. Uh, it's it's this is a big win not only for us but most importantly, uh, Sherry. This is a huge win for the community, the people who live here in Lexington, um, because we're looking at you know the cameras are one thing, but the future is what we're really worried sure. about. Things like cell uh, cell site simulators, stingrays, stingrays yeah. license plate readers, facial recog, all these really nefarious devices that are so easily abused. There, as far as we know, and we can't say definitively because we don't have all the information that we are entitled to at the moment, but uh, we, we suspect that our city doesn't have these things yet. We, we're trying to find out. We're hoping we will find out mm -hmm. in the next few days. Um, but if they don't, the big thing is now is we need to get ahead of it before these things get into our community. Uh, and, and, and our next step, this is our long-term goal, has been to get an ordinance in place here in Lexington that's going to provide oversight and accountability for any and all surveillance, not just cameras, but anything that might be sure. going on. Uh, I think, think it's a common sense thing to ask for, and uh, I don't think we're being unreasonable. It's nothing about having the police not have these devices as tools in our community, but it is all about transparency yeah. and oversight and having the community have an awareness and also some say as to whether we want these types of things in our community. Sure. And and that's the thing. It's that the law enforcement always comes out with, well, you're trying to cut us off at the knees if you want this. When when they really should be concerned with our rights first, because that that is what they should, you know, be as um, you know, law officers or you know, they become um, what's the difference? They, I, I just uh, spoke with someone about the difference between a law enforcement officer and a peace officer. One is to keep the peace in a community. One is to enforce the laws, whether they be right or wrong. And so we don't need law enforcement. We need peace officers. And uh, that is, it's not okay for them you know, the law often works to just hedge the individual in and catch them in a web, like a spider's web. But police and other state agencies just step around it when they want. They just do what they want to do because they have that backing of the state. They have all the force. They have a monopoly on that. And so it's legitimate for them in their eyes to do what they want. And so um, I really commend you guys for standing up to them and 
you know, it's not an easy thing to do in your communities to take a stand and to become the target of law enforcement. Um, because right now you have a, a law, um, a police system there that has proven that they're willing to just do what they want because the law, there was no law against it, right? So it must be okay. The ethics of it, the morality of it never never figured for them so they were going to do it and then when even when the was it the city attorney or the state attorney general that agreed with you guys yeah it, it was the state attorney general. okay so this the attorney general yeah even says this this is not okay you need to give them the documents and they still fight it because if you're not giving them what they want then they say well why are you hiding things from us because you know they think they have a right to know everything about you but they don't have to answer to us had, had the attorney general ruled against us uh, initially, this would have been put to bed. The right. cops would have been like, hey, we were right. The attorney general's on our side. Yeah. But when it came out the other way, all of a sudden they, 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 they got really alarmed. Obviously, it seems to me, aside from the fact that there is an element of how dare you question us sure. uh, about what you're doing, it leads us to believe that there really is something that they just don't want the public to know whether it's an actual piece of equipment or more importantly, the manner in which they're using them. Because we've already seen in cities all across America, typically these types of devices, they're not used in the affluent neighborhoods. They're right. used in the, in, in, in the socially diverse um, neighborhoods of color. Uh, that, that, that's where you find these things most used to target uh, people. And a lot of times it's completely unwarranted. Yeah. Uh, I think we t we talked about that when you were on the show last that, you know, me where I live and I live in the a nice part of town here in Knoxville and I, I don't see cops around here. They're not stopping me to ask where I'm going and what I'm doing when I'm out taking a walk. But, right. you know, you drive 30 miles or more to the to the east of here and you're going to find that you're going to find police everywhere looking for a trap. They're looking to, to stop people. And um, I, I don't. I don't know why that is. I mean, there, there are many reasons um, that we could get off into about it, but uh, I don't have that trap set for me every day. So I, I, yeah. I think it's, you know, it's it's one of those ways that the more wealthy you are, the freer you are in a lot of ways in our country, and that's un, it's unfortunate. It's not right, and I think that's something that really has to be addressed. Um, I have no problem with wealthy people. I think you should get as as wealthy as you can, but. Uh, so that you can have, have more and more freedom because it, it happens to work that way right now. But that's why it's up to, to people like myself to kind of speak out for those people who, who can't speak for themselves. They have been marginalized by the state. So it's coming for all of us. <laughs> Our campaign is to benefit everybody. But obviously, uh, you know, we don't live in a fair world. And there are some folks, members of our community that all pray to this kind of stuff more than others so you know mm -hmm. it, it really is it, it it's something that that at some point will affect everybody um so that, that that's that's one of the important parts of what we do we're uh, we're, we're we're not just doing this for us yeah. um there's a much bigger picture and we're doing it for the future for, uh, for kids that haven't been born yet you know when yeah. i'm gone uh if we if we get our deal done and do things right then then there are generations of way after me that are going to benefit from from the work we're doing right now sure so. yeah it's about leaving that legacy of more freedom not less and yeah. uh, i think it's unfortunate that so many people since it's not happening to them um you know they don't they don't worry about it it's happening to those people right over there they're kind of they're they're poor so you know they, it doesn't even register for a lot of people that it's not right and that once they they get through those people they're going to come for you and your you know more comfortable life we're kind of eased into this uh idea of safety and comfort and you know a lot of people look at anyone who has an interaction with the police is automatically wrong because the the authority is right right like you you can't question the authority that's wrong that's the wrong thing to do um when Absolutely, you have every right to question the authority because the authority is illegitimate, illegitimate in our lives, and we don't we don't have to submit to things that aren't just. <laughs> it's okay. You might want to recenter. It's it's you're cut out a little. I was gonna 
I didn't want to yeah. stop you there. Hey, yeah. that's, Is that better? Yes, that's better. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, so we, we don't want to just act as if the things that are happening to other people don't matter because eventually they will be coming for you. And we, we've seen it. The, the black community, minority communities in general, have been trying to tell us for years and years and years that this stuff was going on. And they, they were not listened to in a lot of ways until uh, it started happening to white folks, honestly, like more and more. Like it's, it's always happened. But once you get a few high profile cases going, then it really starts to take um, a, you know, a, a make an impact in people's lives. And so they're looking into it. And, and every time it happens, I think it's easy for some people to go, well, they were in the wrong, you know, they, they disobeyed the police. So, you know, what did they expect? But what do they have a right to do whatever they want to you in your life? Like, I, I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. And, you know, we get, we get hit with all the crazy what do you have to hide stuff all the time too if you have nothing to hide you should have nothing to fear it's funny mike and i joke all the time we've been asking the city of lexington for over a year now what do you have to hide (laughs) and they've been fighting this tooth and nail for a year to keep their secrets concealed um so it's kind of it's it's funny that we get this question all the time but yet the, the the very entity that we're trying to get secrets out of to get information out of constantly trying to sway us bully yeah. us away keep all of their secrets concealed yeah um mike often makes a joke uh, and he still he still holds up to it if uh, you have nothing to hide send him your uh, your browsing history all of it yeah and we'll be glad to post that on we see you watching lexon and <laughs> facebook page and we'll see, we'll see, you know, if you have nothing to hide, you got nothing to fear. So Yeah. I, I, Nobody's taking us up on that challenge. Right. I'm <laughs> not surprised. Um, I, I think it's interesting, too, with the, you know, the Freedom of Information Act was supposed to be a way for citizens to be able to get information about government operations. And, of course, the problem is, is like in so many other things, the state has a monopoly on that flow of information. So when they send you something, they'll send you all the papers redacted. So there's really no, they they can technically fulfill that, but then they're not actually giving you any information. And so it's just one more way that they step around the law and they say, well, it's for your security. And I, I just can't believe the number of people that have bought into that as Americans. It's, it seems like, you know, what happened to the idea that we stand on principle or we want to stand on principle in this country as an American ideal, that man, that in, or, you know, woman individually standing against the crowd for what is right. Like that used to be something that was admired in this country. And now it's, from people you wouldn't expect it's not admired because you're you're not doing what something an organization that they have highly romanticized and made into the good guys no matter what you know back the blue means no matter what they do you you got to back them forced to save the day yeah yep. so I, it's really deplorable and i really i i i I don't know. I think you're, you know, you wear Facebook friends and you see some of the things that I, I post with the back, the blue, because I want people to start thinking about the stuff they say, because that's a reinforcement into their mindset. And it's a window into their mindset of, um, we're not going to dissent. We're not going to fight you when you come for us because well, you're the authority. And right. They're giving them more and more power every day. So it's not just the fact that we have to fight the system being the police or whoever that are overstepping their bounds. We have to fight the people who support them and give yes. them, you know, like all their support so that they they hide behind them like a shield. And those people fight the battles for them when it's clear that they've overstepped and they go, well, it's just a few good, a few bad apples. Then that's you should be absolutely standing up then because that doesn't protect the credibility of the rest of them we all, the, the adage goes that a few bad apples actually spoil the bunch and yeah. so if the mere existence of a few bad apples is enough to tell me the whole bunch is rotten to the core right you start seeing the level of morale moral turpitude and depravity 
that we're seeing on a daily basis now by some of these police officers that have absolutely no regard. They wipe their ass with the Constitution every day. Essentially, what they've done is they've taken a, a culture that once was respected and trusted. It's become toxic to the point where they've turned serve and protect into command and control. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's heinous and it's frightening. And the simple fact that, as you say, we've got these, these people that just blindly follow that thin blue line and support them just because. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not questioning any of this uh, lack of ethics and lack of morality and just as I said before it's just, it is just blatant moral turpitude yeah there's no other way to describe what we see on a daily basis I spend time every day trying to illuminate people about what's going on around them there's only so much blind eye we can turn yeah. um, but the, I that that's a different rabbit hole <laughs> and, and we could probably do a whole separate show on that and yeah. i'm sure with a lot of cuts and a whole lot of blood pressure and a whole lot of, we'd probably piss off half the world but that's yeah okay. i then that's the thing just talking about this subject with some honesty with criticism towards the police it's enough to piss those people off like you've lost them already unless you're absolutely licking the boots like they'll they'll pay lip service to the fact that well you know every profession has some bad people in it and people who don't do their job well the difference is is that this one when you don't do your job well you don't get in trouble you don't get you know you only get in trouble if the public there's enough public outcry to actually bring you before the state that you work for with the other cops that are the the courthouse um who work for the state as well and for them to judge you on the law that they also have a monopoly on um as an agent and so you get things like a cop who rapes a 13 year old getting three months of probation not even jail time you know things like that a, a, a cop who has your fucked written on his gun and murder someone and and the only reason that he's not a cop anymore is because of that one little thing because if, he, if that weren't there and people weren't outraged by that I guarantee you he'd have probably still had a job so it's 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 sickening and um, I, I think one of the things that I've learned over the course of being in in media um, in the radio show was that um, you know, a lot of times you see that these police officers, when they get in trouble, they retire. They will go ahead and just res or resign from the police force. When they resign, that means they can go get a job somewhere else. Yeah. People don't understand this. Yeah, they, they often do. There was yeah. a, a big case out of my hometown of Chattanooga um, where this was in the 80s, I believe. Um, uh, the police, they either beat or murdered someone. I can't remember. But the guy ended up becoming a police officer in, I think it was Florida. So, uh, because he, he just resigned. And so, it's all dropped. It doesn't go on their record. Um, and they can go on policing. This is how the state protects itself. This is, a, this is one of the problems with a monopoly on force, is that they are insulated from their own ethic, ethical... Um, you know, missteps. And we're, we're not insulated from that when our, our rights should be of the utmost importance to any police officer who's worth their salt, but they're not trained to do that. And they're, they're also, yeah, they're, they're trained with a more, a warrior mentality where we're the enemy. So yep. we have effectively, we have a standing army in every city, in every County in this country and it's called the police force because they've been militarized. They've been taught that we are the enemy and that you, you just follow orders. That's all you need to know and all you need to do. The damnedest thing is they're, they, they're more and more they're starting to demonstrate a lot of the same traits that the red coat British officers demonstrated yes. that actually started, started this country off. Mm -hmm. You know, the same tactics. Uh, thank God we, we still have some semblance of a constitutional right not to quarter these bastards in our houses. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd probably be doing that too. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's getting ridiculous. Yeah, I think, you know, I, I'm not a fan of the Constitution. I think uh, <laughs> most people who've listened to me know that. Um, and, and it's not because I don't agree with some of the things that were memorialized in it. Like, I absolutely believe that every human, not just American citizens, but every human has a right to free speech and has a right to uh, bear arms and, and on and on. Uh, but 
I, I think the problem is, and that bears out through history, is that when you centralize power like that, it always grows and it always becomes out of hand and it always oppresses those people that it originally was intended to protect. So um, I think we, we have to rethink this. We had the Declaration of Independence. For me, that's enough. That, that's a, that's a more, much more simple, much more beautiful document, in my opinion. And um, it was enough to say that, you know, we, we are, we're breaking from this oppression and we're going to do our own thing now. We, that's pretty good. I think people would have figured life out without any more from, than that. So uh, I think, um, you know, we had a revolution and then the Constitution was a counter-revolution to that. And there's a great book to that effect. Um, I think it's called America's Counter Revolution. I can't remember the name of the man who wrote it, but that uh, the Constitution was really a counter revolution to the original revolution, and that um, you know that spirit of defiance that they had initially to disobey the authority. They disobeyed the cops. They even killed some of them. Right? Like that was the the founders of this country were radicals. They were cop killers in some instance because the red coats were the cops, and so. I'm not suggesting that that be done, by the way. I just want to make that clear. Like, I'm not suggesting that. So you can cut off the drones. I'm not saying to do that. But uh, the, the thing is, is that we need to remember that, that there's a defiance is not a bad thing when it's for just reasons. We don't want to be defiant for nothing. But when it comes down to principles and people's rights, then hell yeah, we need to be defiant. We need to make America defiant again. That's what it needs. And, and it gets to a simple thing of knowing the difference between right and wrong. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's just that simple. It's just that simple. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the other, I, I guess, one of the interesting things that a lot of people have overlooked with a, the case that we've had here in Lexington, above and beyond the surveillance implications that naturally came along with this case, since it was a surveillance case, there were actually some First Amendment and, and uh, free press implications with this case because of the open records sure. um, and the base which the lawsuit was primarily based on the open records requests. Had we lost this case, it would have set a very dangerous precedent uh, with regard to how the free press is able to utilize open records and Freedom of Information Act requests yeah. in order to watchdog various government agencies. Um, so in that regard, probably one of the things that really we, we spent a lot of time, time talking about the surveillance aspects of this victory. I, I really don't want it to be lost in all the shuffle and all the excitement about it, about how important that aspect of this case was. Sure. Had we lost this case, <clears throat> it it's frightening what could have shaken out as far as being having our hands tied as not only freelance journalists, but also the established media think what you want to about them. Um, at one point they were that additional check and balance on the sure. government that one day we can get back to that. I, I'm afraid it's far too gone, but there still is, is an independent press out there that's doing some great work down in the trenches. You know, it's not all fake news just because they're an independent, mm. uh, journalist that's not associated necessarily with a large media uh, outfit, it, it some of these folks are doing some yeah. really amazing... They're doing the Lord's and, work, as we say down here. <laughs> really, and if we lose our ability to use freedom of information and open records requests as a tool to watchdog the government, Liberty Kids, we are in trouble. We, we This is something that at every turn, if you use an open records request and you start to see your government pushing back on you like this, circle the wagons, kids. Circle the wagons. Don't let them do it. Yeah. Um, this, this this was an important thing for Mike and I realized that pretty important part of this in addition to all the surveillance stuff. And it just it spurred us on to fight even harder because we realized that there was a whole lot more on the line here than just the surveillance aspects. There were there there was a much bigger thing. Right. And. Uh, Lost this case, it could have been it could have been a really really dangerous precedent. Yeah, and they 
we're pleased that we got the result we did. Yeah, and hopefully, <laughs> you know, they won't appeal it because they will realize that, you know, I, I don't know. The system is often, you know, it's set up to protect itself. The system is not set up to protect you. It's set up no. to protect the system. And that's, you know, they have a monopoly on the law. They have a monopoly on force. They have a monopoly on information. Um, and so... It, it's it's very difficult for someone to fight that for an individual. So when people do stand up and fight it, um, the system all, all often just keeps fighting until you can't fight anymore. Like thankfully the ACLU and kudos to them for <laughs> stepping in and uh, you know helping you guys and and supporting you and and I guess giving you legal aid um, because. I think, you know, without them, this could have, it would have been a whole different subject because you need, we need lawyers in order to, you know, navigate that whole system, that terrible system of what we call the, the law, the legal system today. Um, and, and I think that laws should be so simple that anyone can understand. I mean, you don't need lawyers, but that's, you know, the system is set up. I think, uh, Kev, uh, Kevin Gutzman talked about this on my friend Alan Mosley's uh, podcast, The Gold Standard, that they, this whole situation with the, that goes to the Supreme Court, like the bake the cake uh, thing that just yeah. happened, yeah. They, yes. they didn't settle it in the right way. They didn't settle it for the right reasons. Um, and yeah. so yep. They, yep. they ruled... It was a religious thing instead of a property rights thing. Right. That's, that's where... That's where it went south. Yeah, and so instead of actually settling the issue, they just prolong it. It's it's going to yep. come up again. It's not settled. Yep. And so uh, all the lawyers just keep getting rich off of it, and the system keeps people tied up in it. And often the, the state, because they steal our resources to pay for shit like this. So yep. they can outlast us. They can outlast almost yep. anyone. And that's why it's so important to support people like you guys when this happens, because this could happen to anyone. It could be happening in your community right now. We don't know it. Oh, Sherry, initially when, when Mike got served the, the, the summons uh, and, and was made aware that he was being sued, it was very clear in the print that uh, it was a bullying tactic. They even suggested that should we happen to lose the case, they were going to go after us for or after Mike. I say us. Mike Mike was the one named sure. in the case. Uh, they were going to go after him personally for court costs and legal fees, mm. uh, which their their lawyers are on retainer anyway. Their right. salary conditions. So I, you know, the, the whole thing was a, it was a sham. Yeah. And there's even a, there's a statute that's against that actually prohibits that, but it didn't stop them put, from putting that language right. in, in to the text, yeah. which essentially was just, Hey man, you're supposed to scare away and go away right. now. And uh, they had no idea the, the, yeah. the hornet's nest that they were walking into. Because, yeah. we're, we're not going away. Uh, especially now at this point, man, we've got a little momentum we're not going away anytime soon. That, 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 that's a that's a wet dream for them to even think <laughs> that, right? Yeah. So it's that, that's uh, you bring up a good point with that. That they just, you know, they it's okay for them to lie to us. Now we will be brought up on charges if we lie to them, right? But they can lie to yeah. us. They can tell us whatever, and they know most people people are ignorant of the law. And so, something that I always tell my kids. Never, 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 never talk to the police ever. Don't talk. Never. They can lie. They can lie <laughs> to you to try to get you to uh, to admit to a crime. You yeah. know, but if you lie to them, then then that that's a, that's a crime in and of itself. Right. You're interfering with an investigation. Yes. It, it's the biggest game of catch twenty two you ever saw, and yeah. it's ridiculous. And the tactics. And I'm, I'm, I've had enough. I I I am so fucking done with all of it. I've had enough. We're not going away. Spy pole Fred, if you have any, if you're looking at this, Spy pole Fred is the guy who put this little, uh, this pilot program together. He's, I'm not going to speak ill of Spy pole Fred because I have a feeling this Spy pole Fred and I are going to have a lot more confrontations and dealings in the days to come. But I want him to know that the time for a public conversation about surveillance in my city is now. I'm not playing anymore. I'm mm -hmm. done. We're going to come after you. We're going to be in your face. We're going to be in the council's face. We're getting ready to ramp things up to a notch that they haven't even fathomed yet. If they think that we've been fighting to this point, 
they have no idea what's coming. Yeah. Uh, we, we've got a lot of things on our uh, in, in our in our cookbook, and we got a lot of ingredients that still need to go into this pot. And I just want the entire city council to know that we have just reached the tip of the iceberg. Mm. We're not even close to done yet. We've only and begun about, to fight. <laughs> it's it, it it it's it's about to get real real serious around here because I, mean, I, I I'm done. Yeah. What we're asking for we're we're as I alluded to earlier, our next step is to push for the ordinance that we're trying to get put in place that's going to provide the accountability and oversight that our city deserves with regard to surveillance. It's a very common sense ordinance. We've had this, we have a recommended ordinance that we're trying to get the city council to adopt. We've had this since day one. It is literally word for word, a very concise plan that that provides for um, public awareness, oversight. Uh, There's accountability measures in place for anything and everything that the city wants to introduce going forward. Um, And it also allows for uh, uh, public input, public hearings, uh, public discussion about these things. Uh, all of that's available on our website. We've had it since day one. Uh, we're not going to take it off the table. We're going we're gonna to push forward. And if we have to go, if we have to introduce it into council ourselves line by line and read it publicly, whatever has to happen. Yeah. Um, that's the, our, next, our next emphasis now. If we can get beyond these legal obstacles, and all of this bullshit that they're putting, we're, now it's time to get to the meat and potatoes of, of what our town needs. Yeah. And uh, that's what this was about to begin with. Again, we are not trying to keep the police from using these devices. We understand that there are certain <coughs> excuse me, tools that they need to do the best they can do for our community. But we also expect that they, they have some guidelines with which they um, engage and operate yeah. those systems and that, uh, that the public be aware of them. And uh, so, yeah, yes, it's, it's, that's where we, that's where we go next. Yeah, it's really about an educated populace that's willing to step up and say <laughs> uh, when something has happened to, to actually do something about it, because otherwise they'll just continue to do what they do with everything else and just st- sidestep it. Like, OK, nobody's you know, we have this public forum, but nobody shows up. You know, I, I think it's 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 great that you guys are doing that. But it, it's the education part is the hardest. It seems like the hardest part to get through to people that you're not just complaining because, you know, oh, you hate the police. And it's it's about holding them to the standard that they should be held to that that, yeah. you know, an airline pilot can't just do what they want. They have to be basically perfect. And yes. when they aren't, people get hurt, and not just a little, a lot. And it's the same thing with our communities. When the police do not hold themselves to a higher standard, and if, if they are who they say they are, then they would be calling out the bad ones themselves, but they're that's not. Right. And that's they're what not. we need to rec- recognize is that if they're who they say they are and if they're actually heroes, then they're willing to stand up and say when, when one of their own has done the wrong thing. But they don't do that um, because they're not em- our employees. They steal nope. from us, from a gang called the state that <clears throat> takes our money, takes our resources, steals from people on the side of the road, um, arrests them for nothing, uh, assaults them um, just for, for questioning their authority. And... Yep. Uh, you know, you, oh, man, if you if you jaywalk, you you you, you could get messed up pretty bad. Just yeah. jaywalking. And around. or so. one of the things that I, I absolutely hate and I I wish I could remember the people's name. Um, they have been recording it on Facebook or not on Facebook, on YouTube for quite some time um, up in Murfreesboro. I believe it is the um, uh, out, the DUI checkpoints. Like, there's nothing yeah. legal yeah. about that whatsoever. Nope. But they've made nope. a law where they can chase you down if you make a, like a U-turn within a certain distance. Um, yep. And they're and not... If you, do it, you have to do it properly, too. Right. If you do an improper U-turn. I mean, it's, it's, it's this little fine little, little print right. uh, that they use to, to, to basically, uh, again, use an illegal checkpoint to do an illegal search with right. no grounds, no probable cause, right. n- none of none of that. Just none casting that. a net. No warrant, yeah, they're just you're you're the enemy. You know, you, they're they just they know you're. It's like the dad who 
who spanks the kids when they come home because he knows they've done something wrong, right? Like yeah. he doesn't know yes. what they've done, but I know you ca- kids have been bad, and so you're going to get a spanking. And this is exactly yep. that same sort of mentality of we know that you're out there breaking the law, and we're going to put yeah. a stop to it. But really, it's all comes back to revenue generation. Otherwise, yep. they would they wouldn't waste their time and resources on it. It's got to be more le- lucrative for them to have all those cops out there doing that than it is for them not to. And we have to be a thorn in their flesh. Like we have to stand up and say, "No, you you cannot do this anymore and we're not putting up with it and um, we're going to fight it." And I I think that you guys have done a wonderful job of that, a commendable job. And uh, I look forward to seeing where it goes from here. Um, and one of the stories that I remember covering on uh, when we were on the radio show was uh, the, I think it was ICE that got the plate readers and they were starting a, da- a database of all the plates and they were going to plug in where you were and when. And, yes. and my younger co-hosts, God bless them, um, didn't see a problem with it. They didn't see a problem with it. And, and, what I, I, do, I guess I didn't do a very good job of communicating it effectively to them is that it's one piece of the puzzle. They don't have the right to take that from you and, and, and plug it in and figure out your movements. And it's not a problem until it is. It's not a problem until you've done nothing wrong and yet... Oh, we see you were here, here, and here, and these crimes were committed, and so therefore prove you're innocent. Like, yep. And that happens every day in this country, every single day where people are taken to court and they'll say to them, prove that you're innocent. And that's not yep. how it's supposed to work. It's very difficult to prove you're innocent of something. And uh, they know that. And, and so and even then, they don't find you innocent. They find you not guilty. Not guilty. That's, a, yes. that's a big difference. And so your reputation is damaged. Um, yep. There are, there are consequences to that. You, often financially you're damaged. Um, I just watched a really good documentary on uh, Netflix called The Staircase that I would recommend to everyone. And not even for whether the guy is, is guilty or not. Um, it's for the impact of how a, a long trial um, impacts people and the, the games that the police play. Um, it's really better... like the first few half of the episodes are about explaining what the crime what you know, what happened if there was a crime or not. The second part is where it really gets interesting because it's, it's about the trial and it's about the police investigation and it's about how um, they have having this monopoly on law, the district attorney and the head forensics guy were found to be colluding and just leaving out information, evidence on tests that prove that, They didn't turn out the way they wanted, so they would take another second test that they had done that didn't quite say what they wanted, but it didn't rule it out. So they they have that that monopoly on the flow of information, and they have a monopoly on the law, so they're able to do that and and hedge people in because they believe that you're guilty. Not because they know, because they believe. They've they've decided in their grand wisdom (coughs) that your rights don't matter and that a fair playing field doesn't matter. All that matters is those numbers because they're politicians and they need to get reelected. And this is is not a good thing for a free society. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> not, not a free and open society at all. Yeah. And you, you mentioned uh, just a moment ago, you know, when we start talking about these <clears throat> national databases, that that, that that's a that's a concern. Mm-hmm. And I think you're you're exactly right when you start talking about some of the younger folks who don't realize um, how dangerous that is. Yeah. One of the trends that we're seeing nationally, and it, uh, again, <clears throat> part of our work um, that we're doing here locally with our surveillance <clears throat> is, uh, issues is to keep up with some of the trends and some of the other things that are happening in other cities. Um, so we want to be aware of that so that when it lands here, we're not completely caught off sure. guard. Well, some of the trends that we're seeing right now, you're seeing local m- municipalities, cities, counties, states, um, all participating in surveillance. A lot of their equipment is obtained through federal assistance, yes. grant, again, as we mentioned earlier, civil asset theft. <laughs> right. Um, it's not forfeiture. That makes it sound like it's right. uh, voluntary. <laughs> right. So <clears throat> they're, they're getting these, these 
they're using these federal monies uh, to acquire these devices, to acquire these technologies, with the caveat that, hey, the federal government's going to help help you out with this. Uh, we don't really need anything in return from you. We're just going to help you get this stuff. But what we do need is for you to start sharing this information yeah. as you acquire it. So you have <clears throat> satellites of local municipalities all working individually, loading data about you. Right. about where you go, about what time of day you're going there, about who you're with, what cell phones are in immediate proximity to you, all kinds of frightening little tidbits of data that you might find innocuous on the surface, but when it's all compiled into one file and somebody decides that you might be a political adversary or that you might just have the wrong religion or you might have the wrong color skin or you might uh, be the wrong ethnicity or whatever, um, all of a sudden they have a pool now, a large database that's constantly getting fed and updated information about you specifically. Uh, this is dangerous, dangerous stuff. And that's one of the many alarming trends that we've seen sweeping across the nation. Um, the more cities that go online, one uh, here's one that just popped up in Frankfort, Kentucky, which is our capital. It's just uh, a couple of counties away. The police department there started a new program. And Mike, actually, Mike Meharry started digging in on this and found some scary stuff out that uh, we're going to be doing some more reporting on real soon. Uh, but they, the, this, the police department in Frankfurt has uh, started a voluntary program where um, private citizens and private business owners can sign up to have their uh, personal surveillance on their businesses and homes linked up to the city so that in case there's a crime on your property, they can use that as evidence and do an investigation or if there's a crime in the proximity, they're basically saying, help make your community safer, right. uh, join up to the and sign up to this uh, network and, and we're going to be able to help you be safer. Well, what they're not telling the community is that network is all networked up with stuff on up the line that's connected to the federal government, the NSA, the FBI, right. the CIA. All of these different agencies are all going to be connected to that. They're not advertising that. Well, we've done some some uh, preliminary work on, on what's going on there. It seems very much so that that's the case, but they're right. not making that making that known. Yeah. So that's something else. It, 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 it's coming at us in waves from every little angle and crack, and it's getting to be so much that if we don't get something done ahead of that to protect ourselves – it's going to yeah. be too late. Once this stuff starts yeah. happening, it's just, it's too late. Yeah. It's um, a tidal and, wave. And the, it is a tidal wave. And, and the, the, the potential for abuse is just, yeah. it's frightening. You want to, um, they, they want to take, you know, every, almost everybody, even left, right, center, whatever, will make jokes about politicians and how terrible they are and, and everything. But then right. they want to give them all this power. Like, you know, they're terrible people. You know that they are whores that will sell out to the whoever, whoever has the most money or the majority of people that can get keep them in power. They're going to whore themselves out to them. And yet you you when it comes to surveillance, because it involves the cops, then they want to say, oh, well, you know, they have to be able to do their jobs. They're just doing their jobs. And these they wouldn't use it again. <laughs> against us right because they're the good kids. guys for the kids <laughs> right. man we gotta keep the kids safe right with children yeah you know? and and all the all while they're making them women and children yeah more you know? vulnerable um and that's that's what really kills me about a lot of this um is that the when they often talk about you know making things safer for the children what they're really saying is controlling your life more because they often ends up making children more vulnerable and uh, Very much so. just like the the terrible deplorable um cps system and things like that where yep. uh, we covered a story a while back where um this woman yep. who had never had a run-in with the law. There had never been accusations against her whatsoever. Um, the the state took her children, 
put them in foster care. The children were traumatized. The children were yes. like one of them was pulling their hair out and they were separated from a mother who had been completely good to, to them. And, you know, I, I, I guess I need to follow up on that and find out what happened with the judge because it was such a deplorable situation where um, they weren't even allowed to stay with the grandparents who had not been accused of anything. The, yeah, why, why, why would you separate them from the family entirely? Yeah. That's, that's just ridiculous. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I, there are good people in the foster care system, but yeah. my father's brothers and sisters, all of them went to foster care, and they were far worse abused there than they were in the yeah. situation they were in. And I, I've, I've heard a few psychologists talk about this, that often the best thing, the best kind of intervention is family intervention, where the children maybe stay with a relative for a little while, but the, the family gets counseling, because often it's more traumatic for a child to be removed from the home of even an abusive parent than to, you know, to be removed from them completely because that's biologically we're tied to our parents. I mean, I, I, I don't know why that that is such a, a strong bond. It just is. So to, to remove them completely and act like it doesn't matter as long as someone's putting a roof over their head is a really, really um, horrible thing. Those kids are often drugged up at, I think it's like six times the rate. I don't quote me on that because I don't remember, but it's a, a much higher rate than the average population. They're, they're put on these drugs. And, and you know, I, I, I feel for people in the foster care system. Um, I know a lot of them just want to help, and, and they're trained to do things in a way that actually end up traumatizing kids more, but it's not because they are doing it on purpose. It's just this, the way the system is set up. So there has to be a better... On so many of these fronts that concern law enforcement, there has to be better oversight of what is actually going on. And we, we've got to stop saying, well, they probably did something wrong. Like, no, it's, there is a presumption of innocence for a reason. And that's, yep. that's really, really important. And we do not have that in this country when you can sit in jail for years on a crime because you don't have enough money to get out. You can't bond out. So you sit there for years and, um, you're supposedly innocent. Like why, why can they take your freedom so easily? America doesn't it mean anything yeah. anymore to you? Like, that, well, it's, it's crazy. You, you were, you were talking earlier about how, you know, the, the, the constitution's kind of failed us. And then we, uh, you know, I, th I think a lot can be said with the manner in which we left stewardship of the constitution up to government. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're trusting the, the uh, and a branch of the government, the Supreme Court, to rule what's constitutional and what's not. Well, hell, they work for yeah the government. And so, those people so are... If, if we look at it from that standpoint and we go along with, you know, the, the case that you laid out earlier, then the failure is that... Perhaps the Constitution failed because the people removed themselves from holding those parts of government accountable. So I guess where we're coming from here locally with regard to surveillance is in order to maintain good stewardship over um, accountability of surveillance, mm -hmm. the last thing we want to do is leave it up to government. Right. You're asking we, your... We, your we, we need the people involved in this process and the ordinance that we're putting forth that we're asking the council to adopt allows for the public to have a, a part yeah. in this process. And I think as long as the people are engaged and involved in government accountability, that's the one thing that, ca that actually can keep government accountable. But when mm -hmm. we leave it up to the government to to govern themselves and to provide oversight for themselves. It's just right. kind of like asking the police to investigate themselves. Right. I mean, that's just not, you know, it's, 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 it's pretty stupid. Yeah. When you say it out loud, yeah. it's pretty dumb that we're not having a third party do those investigations. Right. But yeah. that's, a, again, another topic for yeah. another show. It's, but I just thought that that was an interesting correlation where we were talking about the Constitution. Now, one thing that, it, that, that, that got removed from the process was the people pulled out and trusted government to, to be good stewards. And we see how that turned yeah. out. So we're, we're going to go a different way here. We're going to try to keep the people plugged in 
and and engaged in what's happening here and hopefully that'll that'll provide a little bit more governance yeah and I, i'd say you know it's like um leaving a kid in a candy store and telling them not to touch anything not to have any you know there's yeah. there's 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 too much incentive to do things the way you want you know for the kid to to grab the candy and and for me i guess i have a different take on the um accountability of the people in the process because i i i don't look at you know, people not being engaged in the system as their fault because the system isn't set up for them. (laughs) You know, like us keeping them accountable. They shouldn't exist. There shouldn't be a function of that government that can do that to us. So that people are living their lives and ignoring them. um, That's that they're doing what they should be doing. But the only problem is, is that that thing called the state has been legitimized and it has this yeah. proxy force and they've they've said well we can use it on you because we want to so i <laughs> you know i uh, i just i just always want to remind people that the enemy is the state the state is the enemy yeah. your neighbors are not your yeah. enemy until they're willing to use force against you and and we have oh. to remember that they use they they do use force and violence against us every day they vote for these things that well i don't like that you know, homosexuals want to get married and I want to define it this way because my religion tells me to and therefore um, I'm going to use my bludgeon of the vote to tell you what you can do in your bedroom. So, um, you know, they don't think about it that way. They think their morality trumps everything that all the natural rights that a person has. And so um, the, the Supreme Court decision in that was also it was the right decision but for the wrong reasons like it should have been decided that way but it's sort of a mandate that i'm not upset with it because most of the country wanted that and i'm always happy when people are left to to you know live in peace by themselves and not be you know affected by that but I think we also have to remember that the Supreme Court, they're not us. They're not the people. These are the elite of the elite. You know, they're Ivy League types that, that the yeah, they're not, they're not people who are living the, lo- the lives that we're living in the real world. So, um, you know, they're far removed from the consequences of their decisions. I, I'd be willing to bet that none of them have had a popcorn sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> you heard about popcorn sandwiches, huh? <laughs> I, I, yes, I'm willing to bet that none of them have. <laughs> well, on that note, Mr. Clay, I guess we've come sort of to the end of our time together, um, and I want to thank you for coming on and uh, you know keep us updated on what's going on with. We see you watching Lexington and. Um, you know, I just really admire the work that you and Mike have done and that you're standing up and, and you're saying, OK, we might be targets, but we're going to do what we can do to stop this wrong thing from happening. And, you know, if that if that makes me some enemies, well, so be it. But you can sleep the yeah. sleep of the just. Right. <laughs> That's right. Well, Sherry, we, we really appreciate the opportunity to, to, to be on this forum and to uh, get our word out and to, to kind of let everybody know what's going on. Uh, we're hoping that there's going to be lots more great news to come. Uh, stay tuned. Hey, if you're not already doing it, folks, uh, all you Liberty kids out there, follow us on Facebook at We See You Watching Lexington, or you can actually find us. We have, we're legitimate. We have a real website and stuff. So, uh, <laughs> Uh, www.wecuwatchinglexington.com. We uh, will be chronicling every bit of our story as it unfolds, and it's getting more interesting with every turn. And uh, for those of you nerds like me who find surveillance stuff interesting, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, and we're also uh, we we put out a lot of content that uh, is in specifically about different types of surveillance trends that are going on things to be aware of. We educate about the different types of ways the government is spying on you. Yeah. Uh, anything and everything that's about surveillance, you'll find it on our site, mm-hmm. on our Facebook page. So I, I said it before, I'll say it again. It may be one of the top two or three surveillance pages uh, going right now. Yeah. It's really 
something something we've worked really hard at. yeah it is great and and mike put together like a how-to kit to fight the state in this way right there's a podcast yeah. he did what's yeah, the you, name of that podcast again you can go to uh over on the 10th amendment center website uh he has uh, mike has this really great little tool called the activism 101 podcast yes. and it is it's really it's a it's a really really awesome little playbook doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on or if you're on no side of the aisle at all, like many of us are, because, uh, you know, a lot of us just don't like to pick teams. Uh, I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, but, yeah, no matter who you are or what your, what your uh, background is, if there's something going on in your community and you want to do something about it, check out this little playbook. It's going to give you all the how to's on what to do, what not to do. And, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty good. I'm pretty proud of yeah. my partner, Mike, for, uh, some of the things he's done. That's one of the things that he's done. That's been really cool. And it basically chronicles every little step that we've done yeah. along the way. And that's Successes, what, the failures. Yeah. It's what uh, makes it so helpful ready. though, is because he, he did it as he's going through this process. He's also, yeah. you know, generous enough to let everyone else know so that we can do it as well we can we can we're yes. not caught when we get in that situation where we don't know what to do we actually have a a, a, a handbook which i'm sure he would have loved to have had as well when he started but <laughs> like when, when you're raising kids you know even the, the, there, there's no handbook so this yeah. this is kind of nice uh I, I will tell you this regardless of whatever it is the the item in your community that you want to that you want to uh start working on uh, as far as what the government's screwing up, the one thing you need to learn is the freedom of information and open records requests, because that's where you start getting things done. That's yeah. where that's the springboard for you. You will be able to drag more shady, nefarious things from darkness to light. If you will learn yeah. how to use that tool, that tool alone, I man, I'm telling you. If you if you're into liberty, if you are an activist, if you want to get some change done in your community, that yeah. tool, that's the tool, kids. We've got to start learning how to work that and and use them. I mean, and be specific yeah. in what you ask for. Yeah, that they're not they're 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 gonna go word for word and they'll give you as little or as much as you ask for you just have to learn how to ask yeah that so. re reminds me of um you know the the church commission in the 70s uh was revealed um and then it, it exposed cointel pro through an accident where somebody was looking through the documents of that and said well what is this this is a weird word yeah. They requested information on that, and when they got that information, it was redacted in a weird way, and they went to court and figured it. Yeah, and it it, it exposed J. Edgar yeah. Hoover and the FBI for the absolute pieces of shit that they are, and that the way that they prey on this country, and they still do. Don't let them fool you. They've nope. they've dressed themselves up in respectability, and but they control the narrative. Um, these are the same people that poisoned the gin during Prohibition to kill people. Like they've not changed. Don't let. These are the same people that, you know, Ruby Ridge, Waco. They were involved in these things. They shot children in the back. They shot a mother yep. holding a baby on their own land, doing nothing to harm anyone. So burned them to the ground. Yeah, burned burned the Branch Davidians down. So let's not forget that this is who these people are. Like they they're yep. not the good guys in these situations, and you will not convince me of that. Um, Moral turpitude. Yeah. So I think we can keep Use going on this. Sentence, everybody. Moral turpitude. Yeah. Go out tomorrow. That's your that that. Go look it up, kids, and use that mm -hmm. in a sentence, especially about government and cops. Yeah, that we all, it, it, it is the nature of the beast. Right. Yeah. So with that, thank you once again, and uh, <laughs> keep us updated. Take care. Appreciate it. Have a great night. Yeah, you too. Peace out, you guys. Take care.